We were kind of uh, asking ourselves what aspects of land use and community activism, demographics, economics, um, conspire to, to bring farmers markets and community gardens to emerge where they do. Um, you know, what basically, you know, as we heard like this amazing statistic of however many thousands of acres of, uh, of land in New York is gardenable, but only some of it gets gardened, and that obviously is based on the type of people who are around who want to do that. So I don't know if you have any thoughts, or if, you know, or any of you have any thoughts on um, sort of what creates um, those little hotbeds to happen. Um, sure. Um, I guess I can start with farmers markets. Um, I think it, there are lots of different reasons why farmers markets are successful, um, and maybe I, I don't work at the green markets, um, but I do have some. I, I know of some examples. Um, in Fort Greene, that market's kind of gone gangbusters. It's been open six or seven years in Brooklyn, um, and it's mostly a, it's a young, kind of educated demographic there, and so they're willing to buy. There's something that, I have a friend, long-time friend who works at the Green Market, and she's something called, she calls a protein feeling, and so when people start buying protein, cheese, and fish, and meat, then that's an indicator of stability for a market, for the Green, for the green Markets which was interesting to me, so I'll meditate on that, but um, that happens at the Fort Greene Market, and then you look at Tucker Square, which is around Lincoln Center, and you have you know, similar affluence rate there, and similar levels of education, albeit the ages might be different, and that, that's totally unsuccessful as a market. Um, and you kind of wonder why, I mean, but part of it's that there are different there's a different value system there for where your food comes from. It isn't, you know, you can pull off a shelf, it doesn't need to come as an exchange from a farmer's hand, maybe. Um, or you have, I'm trying to think of some other ones, um, a really successful market um, with a different indicator, not the protein feeling, has been, I would say, in Corona, Queens. There's a new farmer development uh, section of the market where you get immigrant farmers who are coming in, and there have been a lot of immigrant farmers there um, and so that's been really successful. I think, as an outsider um, and a patron of the green markets, I think one of like the big sto the bigger story maybe is with EBT. Um, I, it's been in place for three years, and I know Speaker Quinn gave the green market kind of a staff line to hire a full time manager um, and get equipment in. And in one in three years, the first year I think took in a thousand dollars in EBT money and. This year, the third year, it's been a quarter of a million dollars in EBT money. Um, and I'm near the, you know, the Grand Army Plaza one, and people call it the Park Slope ATM. You, know, you go in and you get your coins back, and it's been like, wildly successful. Um, on the other hand, you have other places that you think people self-identify as being very conscious, and Tribeca is a good example of that, because um, I also teach and I've taken my students around to different markets, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I. I'm really about local food and you know sustainable food and you're like oh yeah what'd you buy at the market they're like oh a cider some cider donuts and you're like well okay but that's not really what the market is about and you would need to buy more than that because the market's about making money and if I'm a farmer and I come to a market and I'm not bringing any money back it's not worth my time to go there where so that, those are some examples also that one's a funny one because. Wednesday and Saturday, or Wednesday's for the nanny market, and it's a complicated, really interesting market to look at, um, kind of unpeel lots of layers. Um, 175th Street on the west side um, is another great one, as is Poe Park in the Bronx, um, just because you see these complementary vendors coming alongside, maybe Sean knows a little bit about that, but Tamale Carts, um, I know my family's from the Bronx, but yeah, there, there's Tamale uh, Carts there, and then some taco stands as well. Um, actually,